Dodson crew is looking sharp. I love seeing all these oak kids. Hey, oak kids. Here's our kid. Ready? Ready? We just have an oak. We have an oak kid. It is. Wow. Oak kid in. in you look fabulous. Handsome. Are you doing service today, T? Yeah, he's our <laughs> he's guest preacher this morning. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's so handsome. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Happy Easter. Hi, Hi Titus. Hi. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll let people uh, keep coming in for uh, the next couple minutes, but um, for the first part, uh, first I wanted to draw your attention to the screen in front of you, and all those beautiful flowers are flowers that you all sent in pictures of um, from your homes and neighborhoods and neighbor's yards and parks. Uh, during this time away and we photoshopped into a flowering cross um, and even cooler uh, and there were more than 62 photos that got sent to to uh, make this yeah. and even cooler we were able to keep the flower the physical flowering cross tradition alive this is from yesterday afternoon at oak church we had a handful oh, nice. of awesome people including uh, Kendra Knipe and Sarah Neff and Bethy Figgy and the Burchettes, Alex and James, uh, decorating. They staggered their time and wore gloves and masks and did it in a socially distanced way, but we kept the tradition alive. At the beginning of, of Lent, we started this community arts project, making these new panels, and we got interrupted. We didn't quite finish, but as it as it happened, the Hope oh, panel was, was the one that was the girls. ready to be no, seen. So, um, uh, it was uh, a beautiful witness. Uh, I drove by yesterday when they were finishing up and there were neighbors and passersby taking pictures. Um, so if you get a chance this afternoon and need a car outing, um, you can jump in your car and drive by. Uh, to see it, take some pictures, say a prayer, and uh, pronounce a, an Easter blessing uh, on our neighbors. Um, thanks to everyone who is involved in that. So before we uh, have our call to worship, I invite you all to um, take a sec. Maybe you're all doing this. I don't know what everyone's Zoom habits are, but take a second to scroll through this, the tiled screens and see everyone because sometimes I realize 
Um, some people have their settings so they don't get to see who is with them in a way they would at church physically where we get to look around and see who all is in the room. So take a second to see who else is in the room uh, with us this morning on this Easter Sunday. Excellent. Um, I invite you all for our call to worship, if you feel like you're able to unmute yourself um, so that we can respond in our Easter call to worship. You're muted. <laughs> Join me with the bold face. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Hallelujah, Christ, Christ. He is risen Hallelujah. I'm going to invite Alex Burchett to read our gospel read. After Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. Coming to the stone, he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now hurry, go and tell the, his disciples. He's been raised from the dead. He's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given the message to you. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I am going to Galilee. They will see me there. So I think today, a bunch of different people of us are going to be playing songs. So don't be shocked if you see different faces playing music. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Earth and heaven in chorus say. Hallelujah. Raise your roars and triumphs high. Hallelujah. See, he has and earth reply. Hallelujah. Love's redeeming work is done. Hallelujah. 
Where, oh, death is now thy sting. Alleluia. Once he died our souls to save. Alleluia. Where's thy victory boasting brave? Alleluia. So we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia, ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Alleluia, Alleluia. So invite Sabrina uh, to read our responsive Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music. With trumpets and a horn blast, shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord. Because he is coming to establish justice on the earth, he will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
Calvin to read from 1 Corinthians 15. Brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to the good news that I preached to you, which you also received and in which you stand. You are being saved through it if you hold on to the message I preached to you, unless somehow you believed it for nothing. I pass on to you as most important what I also received. Christ died for our sins in line with the scriptures. He was buried and he rose on the third day in line with the scriptures. So if this message that is preached says that Christ has been raised from the dead, then how can some of you say there's no resurrection from the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ hasn't been raised either. If Christ hasn't been raised, then our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. We are found to be false witnesses about God because we testified against God that he raised Christ when he didn't raise him. If that's the case, that the dead aren't raised. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He's the first crop of the harvest of those who have died. Since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead came through one too. In the same way that everyone dies in Adam, so also everyone will be given life in Christ. The word of the Lord. Jesus, what a beautiful name, Son of God, Son of Man, Lamb that was slain. Joy and peace, strength and hope, grace that flows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Truth revealed, my future sealed, healed by my love and freedom, life and war, grace that blows all fear away. Jesus, what a beautiful name. Jesus, what a beautiful 
Jesus. Son of God, a slave. Again, I remind you that um, later in our time together, we'll share communion. So um, now might be a good time to gather um, something from your pantry, uh, like bread or juice, or maybe even champagne on a morning like today, right? So this morning we had our gospel resurrection reading from Matthew's gospel that Alex read for us. In it, since this familiar story that might even still be a little strange for us as we read it or hear it this morning, because at the heart of this gospel story is this moment where at the very nexus of life and death, the messenger of the Lord speaks into the fear and terror and says, do not be afraid. Maybe that's the word that you need to hear this morning. Do not be afraid. The messenger says, I know you're expecting the worst I know that you're expecting the usual. I know you're expecting the obvious outcome. After all, they were in a graveyard. You, you wouldn't be faulted for being one of those early visitors and expecting to see death, despair, defeat. Expecting only to see the products of sin and suffering and sorrow. After all, all your hope has been destroyed. All your political hope, all your spiritual hope, all your social hope, whatever you had heaped onto Jesus and all different people kind of um, put whatever different kinds of hope they had on him. And many of them were disappointed because their hopes didn't match up with the hope that he provided. Whatever your hope had been on Jesus had been destroyed permanently socially distanced, not only outside of the city gates, but beyond all respectability and even to the very bowels of creation, to the place that the Psalms call Sheol, the grave, to hell itself. But this messenger, this angel says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because he's not there. Jesus is not where you'd expect him to be on a morning like this morning. He hasn't stayed put. He hasn't been able to be domesticated or terminated. He's been raised. His broken body has become a spoke in the wheel of this inevitable machine of sin and death. The Apostle Paul takes this pretty seriously. Uh, Calvin's reading, in Calvin's reading, he says, 
well, this is pretty important because if it's not true, well, we're idiots. Those of us who believe in this resurrected king of this strange kingdom. If, if it's not true, there's no hope for us or for anyone. All of this pain, all of this sacrificing has been for naught. I wonder if some of these types of thoughts have been happening kind of on a micro level for us during this season of faith and hope and quarantine. That we're doing all of these things. We have faith in the things that we're doing, that they're going to count for something. That we have this hope in things unseen, that this global pandemic will end sooner than later. But everything is spaced out a couple of weeks in advance. So we don't really know how much what we're doing is even matter. We've been tested these days, and I'm sure that you've had some small personal revelations over the last several weeks. You've, you've gotten to see, I know I've gotten to see the places where I am optimistic to a fault. I think I control things and I'm finding out I don't control as much as I thought I controlled. Or maybe I'm pessimistic to a fault where I think things are, are bad and they can never get better. I'm too stuck in the moment. My imagination is too limited. But I think in a time like this, on a day like this, the phrase from Leslie Newbegin comes to mind when he says, I'm neither an optimist nor a pessimist. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Neither an optimist nor a pessimist. Jesus is risen. What if this is true? Like true each time of the year when we come and we dress up and we celebrate it, and depending on how much you feel like it's true, maybe it's true that much. But what if it's true even more? What if it's true for the whole world? What if it's true about everyone and for everything? What if Jesus being raised by the same spirit that we're given is the most true thing all the time and forever? Would that change your outlook? Would that increase your ability to see and hope here? I think in some ways, like I would never think up or trade the ability to be with y'all for what we're doing right now over technology. But I think in some ways it's beautiful and it is poetic to be celebrating Jesus's resurrection in our homes. Because that's exactly where we'll continue to practice resurrection for the rest of the year and the rest of our lives. This, this place, this normal place, this place that by now we're probably sick of is where we will practice and live into the resurrection. It's in this season, it's in our homes and around those who we've battened down with that we need to see new life. We need to know that it's there. We need to know that it's available. And we also need to see the forces of hope operating. We need to see the systems of fear and sin and death being beaten. I say this, again, not as an optimist nor a pessimist. I don't say this, that fear and death and anxiety and depression aren't real and aren't here. So many of us know those things too well. But what if this season of resurrection just helps us hold the door ajar? So when we wake up to face the routine that we've grown weary of, the family that we're drained by, the work that has been interrupted, the financial strain that we're under, or the tense relationships that we're stuck in, there is a new word for us. And that word comes from the angel, but it also comes from Jesus himself when he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Jesus isn't dead. He's not here. He's not there. He's not where you'd expect him to be. He's not among the rubble. He's alive. That graveyard has become a garden bed. We read from Matthew, but John's gospel is even more explicit. Mary mistakes the risen Jesus for the gardener. That spot where death runs the show is now a place for life. That's what these gospels are giving us an imagination for. That mode of just survival, of hanging on with white knuckles, 
and hoping no one notices that you're falling asleep at the wheel and you jerk awake every once in a while when you hit the rumble strips, that place of survival becomes the place of revival where the spirit is also bringing us back to life. That place of fear, that place of vulnerability, that place of scarcity, of selfishness can also become the place of courage and resilience and fecundity and humility, all of these things, this, this abundance. Maybe you need to hear this one, that place of isolation and loneliness can become the place of community. But I'm, I'm tempted when I hear this good news, I'm tempted to, to always be looking out the window for a big change of scenery. I wanna know that this is happening. I wanna know that I'm making progress. I'm still hoping for some jump cut to somewhere beautiful where I can be everything I think I need to be. But this, this good news of the resurrection of Jesus can help us stop these blind calculations of the optimist or the dejections of the pessimist and help us live into the grace and possibility of Christ's resurrection life here, like right here. Um, many of you know, and we've, we've heard it so many times, the text of Isaiah 61, it's, it's Oak Church's foundational imagination text. Um, the, I see the Pendricks on this call. They were in the room uh, with a few people and we got energized by these words of not just the spirit of the Lord anointing Jesus, the Messiah to do these good things, but also uh, creating space for transformation, for metamorphosis. And I wonder, I wonder in this resurrection mode, if these words from Isaiah 61 don't mean uh, like beautiful promises for leaving transformations, but rather there are beautiful promises for staying transfigurations. And here's what I mean by that. All those things, ashes to beauty, mourning to despair, uh, mourning to joy, despair to praise, desolate ruins to flourishing neighborhoods, shame to a double portion, robbery to justice. All these things um, don't happen by wiping the slate clean and starting over or by moving somewhere else, they happen exactly in the middle of that pain. Right in the middle of the ashes comes the beauty and the ashes are still somehow remembered or present and given dignity to. Right in the middle of mourning, there is joy and there might still be tear tracks on our face from that mourning. Praise comes out of despair, but it doesn't erase it. The desolate ruins to flourishing neighborhoods, we don't clear cut, we renew. Shame to double portion. The memory of our shame makes that double portion all the more valuable. What if because Jesus' broken body from Good Friday is made new and everlasting by continuing to bear the scars on his hands and feet inside on Easter Sunday, that we too can be renewed exactly where we are. Exactly right here. I want to close with some, some art that I just can't get out of my mind. I, I came across this a few months ago and I can't stop thinking about it. And I wish so badly that I could see it in person. It's this British artist named Jason DeCares Taylor. And he creates these underwater museums. And what I think is beautiful and, and what connects this art to the resurrection is how um, insane it is for him to make these beautiful like pH balanced concrete sculptures and to sink them to the bottom of the ocean. He does this over and over. He, he has these whole underwater museums and part of this is founded from his, um, his desire to bring awareness and flourishing back to our, our, uh, our hurting um, oceans and diminishing reefs and, and underwater life. And so uh, this artist, Jason, is creating all of these sculptures, some of mundane, normal things, of not even all that pretty uh, moments in our mundane everyday life. And he's sinking them to the bottom of the ocean. 
But what's beautiful is his imagination is leaving hope and possibility that these are not just going to turn into more trash at the bottom of our ocean, but they're actually going to come alive at the bottom of the ocean. The, the, the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean is, is in some ways is so, um, so deadly for, for humanity to try to get down, but also so teeming with life. And, and he recognized this possibility. And so these concrete statues, which are beautiful in and of themselves, become all the more beautiful when they're put at the bottom of this ocean. And they also become uh, extensions and new uh, places for, for uh, habitat to thrive and for a flourishing reef to develop. Uh, I love this imagination. I think this imagination is available to us because Jesus's human body, like ours in every way, was acted upon by the surprising force of the same spirit that we share. And Romans makes that clear. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us, is given to us as a gift. And so now the rules of the game are changed and our expectations need recalibrating. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, all of these dramatic shifts aren't just like off the wall hopes. They're not bleak outlier long shot possibilities. They can become our new expectations. We can have an imagination for the way new life is gonna come about in the midst of death and destruction. Death was not the end. It is now not the end. It is instead the compost out of which new creation grows. The, the very sight of aloneness in despair also becomes the warrant for a new sociality, like an ever-expanding spirit-led extroversion. I don't mean that we're all going to become extroverts. Sometimes introverts are the best evangelists, but the, the idea um, and the, the command there is to go and tell the disciples about what you've seen, that Jesus is not there. Go and tell about this beautiful message of good news that you don't even necessarily really have to have your own grip on, but you just know somewhere in your bones that it is the most real reality. It's the most true truth. It's the most alive life. So go and tell about it. I asked uh, Rach yesterday on a walk, what is, what is the good news of Easter for us today? And she says, well, isn't it always the same? And it is and it isn't. Uh, I think there's a special word for us in quarantine, but when it comes down to it, the Easter good news is simple and it is what it always has been and will be. Jesus is risen. Do not be afraid. Go, or in times like these times, stay and be a witness. Jesus is risen. Do not be afraid. Go and be a witness. Amen. I'm going to invite Katie to uh, play a song to help us uh, reflect.
fear, there is nothing to fear, nothing to fear, for I am with you. invite Nate Hood to lead our prayers of the people. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together as we pray for our neighborhood, our churches, our family, our friends, our enemies, our city, our country, and our world. Uh, as you offer a prayer, don't forget to unmute. And uh, we can all, when you end your prayer, say, Lord, in your mercy, and we can all kind of pray together with your prayer. Lord Jesus, when I thank you so much that when I feel lost or when I feel like there's no way forward or when I feel alone or hopeless, 
but if I can stop long enough to hear your voice, that you're with me and you're with us, and that those things are not the end of the story. Thank you for this day and every day you are alive and you offer something new. Help me to hear you and to trust you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, I just thank you for the unique ways you're drawing us um, close to you in these t different days and times. And Father, as we um, celebrate new life, um, I just want to bring before you all the healthcare workers in this country, but also around the world who are... Um, taking risks with their own lives um, for others, Lord God. I pray that you would um, just give them courage, give them peace. Father, speak to them and draw them close to you um, in special ways in these days. Bring them comfort. Be a, be a voice of peace in their minds. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we <clears throat> lift up to you um, everyone who's, who's lost someone in the past few months, um, all the families that are that are reeling with, with grief right now. Um, God, that they would just feel your spirit's presence, your love and your peace, and that you would, um, God, give them the, the strength to, to grieve well. Um, yeah, and that um, we would keep them in our thoughts in our prayers. Um, amen. Lord, I pray that um, you would be with Michael and I as um, we will be in the hospital tomorrow. Um, welcoming our baby boy into this world uh, and pray that you would uh, protect us um, during that time and the baby, um, that there would be no complications with the delivery or post delivery um, with either me or the baby and that it would go well, that we wouldn't um, pick up coronavirus in the process, that everything would go smoothly um, and that you would uh, Give us wisdom as new parents. Um, amen. Jesus, um, Thank you that you allow us to um, bumble and like s just stumble upon you sometimes. Um, 
when we're not the people of of faith that we think we should be god you um allow us to mistake you for a gardener um and we end up being right and um thank you just for the surprising ways the imaginative ways the reminders from chris that um hope is beyond sight sometimes and yet it's it's so within um, our grasp and our context and I just praise you God for um, the deep grace in that would you just allow us to lessen the pressure on ourselves to be so faithful and just remind us that Easter and resurrection is the truest true either way um, Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Um, Lord, I pray that you would, um, continue to give us all, um, a generous dose of grace as we continue on in this very weird time. Um, I pray you'd help us be gracious with one another. Um, I pray you'd help us be patient and, um, loving when we're all being stretched and pushed in so many different ways. Um, I pray you would uh, remind us to be gentle and to go slowly and to um, ask better questions and not jump all over each other. Um, thank you for the ways that you've showed up for each of us and brought delights into these um, weird days um, that we have. And um, Thank you that you are still indeed with us and um, thank you for this weekend and the reminders that um, you're providing for us to walk through. Um, pray for my coworkers, would you please continue to guard and protect them? Um, yeah, thank you for being with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Lord, I pray for our brothers and sisters um, who um, can't be in these uh, times because of um, uh, not having good access to technology to do this, but uh, who remain with us in prayer and are knit to us by your spirit. Um, thanks for times to um, gather um, on a very limited basis with them to um, uh, remember that they are uh, parts of this uh, church body um, and beloved um, friends. Uh, bless uh, Junie and James, uh, James and Jennifer, Gary, um, uh, and bless uh, Larry and uh, and many others. Uh, thanks for the, the growing uh, community of uh, friends in the neighborhood during this time apart. Uh, continue to uh, give them everything they need um, physically and emotionally in uh, your very presence. We give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I want to pray for my neighbor um, right now who hasn't been able to work for over a month um, and is still waiting for food stamps or unemployment or um, some aid to come. 
Um, I just pray that you'll help me and my roommate to know how to help him um, and to encourage him, um, but also to have good boundaries in that relationship, whatever that means for a time like this. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. Lord, thank you so much for your mercy and your guidance during these difficult times. I lift up my aunt who's sick with the virus and my uncle who could be near. Please, Lord, just protect them and keep them here longer, Lord. They're just pillars in our families and I just love them so much and give them mercy for their brother that they just lost to the virus. And I pray for my cousin who's just recovering from the virus, Lord, and she's young. She has two kids at home and I just lift her up too. And thank you for allowing her to get through and be in recovery now. I just ask that you protect all of our families, Lord. And, um, Let thy kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, hear our prayer, Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, risen one, thank you that you know our sorrow and you also know our joy. Help us to follow you in your death and also in your resurrection we love you and we adore you we praise you today amen amen one in one um tradition that got interrupted by this uh, um, time that we're in is traditionally we um, baptized, uh, we baptize people on Easter Sunday as a way to participate in Jesus's uh, death and in his resurrection, um, but also to remember our own baptisms and entry uh, into God's people um, by means of faith, by Christ's faithfulness and by the Spirit's welcome uh, to, we, we will have these baptisms. We will have these baptisms when we are together. Um, but in the meantime, I invite you to renew uh, your baptism. Um, and Meg is gonna lead us in our baptismal covenant renewal. Do you believe in God the Father? We believe, we believe in, in God. God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We, we believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? We will, we will with, with God's, God's help. help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? We, we will, will, with God's, God's help. help. 
will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We, we will, will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? We, we will, will, with God's help. help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? We, we will, will, with God's, God's help. help. invite you um, to gather your elements from your home, bread and a cup, to share in this feast that God calls and allows us that our tables might become Jesus's table. The night that Jesus was betrayed, Maundy Thursday just passed. He was celebrating a Passover feast. I can't help but think that the Gospels story doesn't retell this Passover story. This Nile network of women um, being the bearers and the agents of good news as God seeks to overcome and provide deliverance from the forces of sin in death, in slavery, into new life. So that night, as they shared their feast, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, giving thanks to God. He broke it, and he gave it to them. He said, take, eat. This is my body. It's given for you. A little while later, he also took the cup, and likewise, he blessed it, giving thanks. He said, take and drink. When you do this, remember me. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for the sins of many. Take and drink from it. Will you pray with me for these good gifts? Lord, we lift up our hearts to you as we receive these good gifts of bread and cup, your very body and blood broken and poured out for us, for our sins, for the sins and sake of the world. But your body was not just broken, your body was healed and made new and everlasting. And you invite us into that new and everlasting life. As we eat and as we drink, let us remember you and Lord, let us be remembered, put back together as your body, as members of this body of Christ. Without fear, sent to proclaim your good news in this world. Thanks for your spirit that breathes new life into us. And like Ezekiel's Valley of Dry Bones gives us the possibility to rise again. We give you thanks for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Christ's body and blood broken and poured out for you. Well, friends, I invite you to go this week with that Easter good news. Jesus is risen. Do not be afraid. Go be Jesus's witnesses. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for being with us today. Uh, I hope you all have a uh, wonderful restful days, um, text someone, uh, 
the peace of Christ uh, from a distance. Uh, uh, families, I hope you're enjoying your Oak Kids uh, Easter egg hunts if you haven't already. Uh, I hope you had the chance to eat some good food. Um, I'm looking forward to, I'll, I'll be over at the church later this afternoon to hand out some Easter baskets to uh, some of our friends. We have standing Sunday afternoon appointments. So even though you're not able to see or be with uh, some of our, our neighborhood uh, friends, our Oak folk in the, in the neighborhood, um, they're staying connected. Uh, they, they love you and send greetings. Um, and, and I'll continue to convey uh, your love to them. Uh, thank you all. Feel free to stay on the call and, and chat and catch up. Blessings. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. 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 <laughs>